Hello everyone, I am back with another video about the fake cache board. As you can see here, this board has more cache memory than system memory. 32 megabytes of level 2 cache on a 486DX266. Of course, this is fake. This board right now has 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache, but I modified the BIOS to show us 32 megabytes. And today we will use for one mod bin, but also a hex editor and a disassembler to look a little bit at assembly language. I have to admit that I have no experience in assembler, but because I have had so many people reaching out, especially two people, one person on Vogons, unfortunately I couldn't reply because I'm a newbie there and I don't have the reply function, so I'm really sorry for that, but thank you so much for your post. If I miss your comment, then I'm really sorry, but there's just too much going on. Best way is always email. These ones I definitely check all the time. But Facebook Messenger and Vogon's messages or Discord is not guaranteed that I will reply immediately. But anyway, thank you so much for your input. This is really helpful. So on Vogon's I got a message that is really not long as you can see here. And uh, I also got a graphic attached. This message actually contains the solution to revert any change that was done to the BIOS and have it back to displaying the cache memory correctly. But I also got another message from someone who added a portion of the BIOS in disassembled code on GitHub and it shows the specific section that has the modified BIOS code that fakes the cache memory display. So we're going to try today to fix the BIOS, but also play around with it a little bit. I will share with you the tiny things that I have learned since I published the video about that board. And this was really not much. I maybe spent one or two days trying to wrap my head around assembly language and figuring out how to recalculate the checksum of the BIOS, because we are going to modify it today with a hex editor. Okay, so I want to try to keep the complexity as low as possible. I still try to convey the message as good as I can, but assembly language is not the easiest to understand uh, within a couple of days. What I did so far is I copied version 1.2, which I downloaded from the retro web to this PC, but I also have version 2.1, the original BIOS that was on this motherboard when I found it. I put everything in this directory and you can see here, uh, 201, the ending 201 is the original BIOS and 1.2 is the version from the retro web. Now, as I mentioned before, we are going to use two tools in DOS today. One is Modbin, but we are not going to modify anything in uh, Modbin. It is just a way to verify that the checksum is okay, which we will get to in a moment. Mostly we will be working today in a hex editor that can also disassemble the code into assembly language, which is human readable uh, machine code. Um, I put everything into the folder modbin and I created a small helper tool that allows me to pick between different modbin versions, but we will use version 4.50.82a today. And I have the Hue hex editor here as well. It is working in DOS, it is free, and it can disassemble the code into something that we can look at today. So this is really nice. Let's just start it right away and uh, let's have a look at our BIOS files. Let's start with the original BIOS. So yeah, this is uh, just ASCII text, which uh, displays characters that are readable, but also things that are not readable. So it looks all kind of gibberish here but we can change to hex and then we get uh, the byte representation here and on the right, the ASCII representation. That's a little bit better to understand what we're dealing with, but I can also go to the decode section and then we get our assembly language code here. So maybe very quickly on the left side, we see memory addresses, then we see instructions and bytecode. And in the third column, we see the decoded instruction. So what you see here from the top, move, call, test, J, E, loop, and so on. This is the decoded instruction. And then in the last column, we see parameters, values, and so on. I really hope that this is not too intimidating for me. It, still is, this is all magic to me, 
But sometimes I can follow sections, which is really encouraging and uh, interesting to follow. So let's go back to our hex representation here. This is the nicest one, I think, to, to look through. I'm just scrolling through this file right now that you see that, yeah, there is almost nothing readable right now on the right side. You can also use the key page down to jump through larger sections. What I'm trying to find right now is to pinpoint where the cache memory is being calculated. And well, here we have some stuff that is readable again. You see the text system configurations, award software Inc. system configurations. And then you have CPU type, coprocessor, base memory. That is familiar, I think, because it looks like the system configuration screen that is shown right before the operating system starts. So maybe here we will find also something related to cache memory. So here are parallel ports, CPU clock. Ah, cache memory. So at least here we have a reference to our cache memory. And I think here you also have the spaces and then you have colon and then maybe more spaces. It looks like our label. And let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six empty spaces. And then we have a colon and then comes the display of the cache memory. So this is definitely something we can look at. What I will do now is because obviously we can't see anything what's happening before or after the cache memory text we will jump into the decoded values. So I go to decode. And now we are here. I think this was the memory location that we have seen right now. Let's go back. No, okay, so here is the cache. So here we start. In the top center, you see the memory address 24CE. If I go back to hex, 24CE. This is our cache memory text that seems to be here. So I don't think this is decoded here correctly. I don't think uh, this makes any sense. How far does cache memory go? Cache memory goes until, I think we need that colon here. It goes until memory location 24E0. So 24E0. So I think this is not really something that is instructions that we see here. So I think this is just wrongly decoded, but I may be wrong. Uh, what happens after is, so we have maybe from here add, this may also still be wrong. We'll just start from here. This is, just an instruction, it uh, is decoded on the very right, AL comma 03C, and then we have a comment which uh, points to smaller. This is just something I want to use as an anchor to know where in the file we are. So we are at 24E8. And what we should also know is that we started, the string was at 24CE. So let's just see what happens after this instruction that I picked now at 24E8. And then we can go to the next one. We see nothing that makes much sense to us. But this one looks familiar. So remember the string started at 24CE. And this is referenced here as well. And it's a move instruction, which copies something from one place to another, simplified. And we are copying our string that's at memory location 24CE to something called SI. We'll not go into details. And then we call a method. And then we move something else from memory location 5A54 to SI. And then we call another method. There is an OR instruction, there are some conditions, and there is another call, another OR, another condition, and so on. Most likely we have a difference in that section compared to version 1.2. So I think the best way of checking this right now is to go into version 1.2 
and see how this looks. I'll make a screenshot of this one that we can compare it to version 1.2. There we go. And let's also look for our cache memory. And I think it probably is somewhere close to the same position. And yes, here we have system configuration again. And uh, CPU clock, cache memory, here we go. So as you can see, this is in a completely different location right now, but it looks very similar because here is our anchor point again. This is the same one that I had before. We're just a little bit on a different location right now, but let's see what we have here. So we again have a move instruction and I think this 23F1, which we can go to, so 23F1, which you can see on the right side, is the beginning of our cache memory string. So we have the same the same structure here probably, but it is just a little bit shifted in, in the file, in the location where it's referenced in the file. So let's go back to our 23F1. So this is our current instruction, the move. And then we have again a call. We have another move into SI. We have seen this in the other one as well. Then we have a call. Then we have the OR instruction, then we have this condition that's going on, and then we have a call, OR, and so on. So the simplest thing how I can figure out, me as somebody who doesn't know exactly what's happening here, is to compare the flow of these two pieces of assembly, version 2.01 versus 1.2, and see if we can see dramatic differences somewhere because it would make sense that the change for calculating the cache memory size is somewhere hidden in maybe one of those method calls, like these call instructions. But also because I have seen the solution and I know what uh, the people that messaged me told me to do. So yeah, I have more information than most of you probably. And that is why we are trying to focus on this part. So what I will do now is I will keep both BIOS files on the screen, at least that section that we looked at right now. The version 2.01 is fully displayed here, but then I will only take the instruction and the parameters from version 1.2. And I will get rid of the memory addresses and everything. Because what I want to do now is I want to compare how different are the memory addresses between those two versions. They will change because the code is in different locations. But yeah, let's just go through it. And as you can see from the very first, we have a compare instruction, which looks identical. Then we have an add instruction, which also looks identical. This is line number two. Line number three, we have jump S, JMPS. And in version 2.01, we have 25.0Z. And in version 1.2, we have 24.2F. Yes, it's a difference, but it is, well, it's just a different location. Let's continue. AL03C, this is the same. Then we have another OR instruction. Then we have, this is where our cache memory text is being pulled into SI. So as you can see, we have 24CE in version 2.01 and 23F1 in version 1.2. So again, it looks like the reference to the memory is coming a little bit earlier. Instead of 24, we have 23. And then we have a call to a method from 11.4D to 10.91. So these are all hexadecimals. If you would convert it into decimal and make a subtraction between those two numbers, you will maybe end up with a difference of maybe 300 or something like this. So... Yeah, they are different, but not that much. Now the next one, we move 05A54, and in version 1.2, it's 569E. I guess it's also close enough. Then we call 1E10. We call in version 1.2, 1D80, also close. Then we have the OR instruction. Then we have our conditional statement, 2504 versus 2427, also very close. Then we have a call from 
DF00A8A0. So between A and D is a big difference. This looks suspicious, very suspicious. So if we look at memory address in version 201.24 FD, this call to this method looks suspicious. This is different. Let's continue a little bit. We have an OR instruction, then we have a instruction from 25.10 to 24.33. This is okay. Then we have AL020. We have 3A07 to 3881. That I think is okay as well. AL020, and then we have 3A07, 3881, the same that we had above already, and 2570 to 2484. And the rest in these screenshots is identical. So the only thing that looks suspicious to me, at least as somebody who doesn't know much about assembly and what all these instructions mean, is what method is being called at memory location, 24FD. The method that we are calling is in DF00 in version 2.01, but it is at memory location A8A0 in version 1.2. So what I will do now is I will go back to our code and let's have a look at that specific memory location. So this is BIOS 1.2. This is the good BIOS that is not modified and it was this memory location here. This is the memory location that had the A8, A0 and the other one was DF00. So let's see what method is being called here at A8, A0. So we can go to A8, A0 and we see so here was a return now we are a8 a0 and we can see that we are starting with a move operation we are copying the hex value 3a into al then we have another or operation if i'm not mistaken what this does is it's just flipping one bit i checked this in the hex Calculator. I don't want to do this right now. There is so much other stuff we have to go through. Then it reaches an out instruction. What this exactly does, I don't know. I guess it writes to a specific address. If I'm not mistaken, then it is writing to a hexadecimal port 70, whatever is in AL. It's again a value stored in the register. And we had this set in the two lines above. And then it does the same thing, but this time it writes to, again, a different address, but this time whatever is in AX. I don't know what is in AX. And then it reads something. Whatever is in location 71, I don't know if this is a port, a memory address, whatsoever. I have no idea and we don't care, but it stores it in AL. And then it does, again, writes whatever is in AX into 0E1. Then it adds 7 in hexadecimal to whatever is in AL. And if you look at a hexadecimal representation of 7 in binary, then you will see that the first three bits are all ones. This is what it does, and then it returns. So if I am not mistaken, it could be that this instruction in AL, 071 is returning how much cash is in the system. I don't know if this is true. This is just me trying to make sense of this. Now I'm back at the place that we investigated this one method that most likely reads the cache size of the motherboard. And then we can continue in the code. And then we have some comparisons and conditional jumps. I will not go into this because I don't understand it very well. But we have another memory location here, 2433. So if we get the cache size, we need to display it. And most likely we will get some binary representation, so it needs to be converted somehow, or maybe we don't get exactly the value that is required, because remember, BIOS codes usually were written in very efficient ways. Remember the Y2K bug, instead of storing the year in four digits, they just stored the last two digits. And then when the year flipped from 1999 to 2000, we suddenly had an issue because 
well, how should the computer know that it's now the year 2000 and not 1900? So maybe instead of getting the value of the cache that is installed directly, maybe you get something in binary like 1 means 64 and 1 0 means 128 and 1 1 means 256 and so on. So maybe let's go and see 2433, which should be right here. So <laughs> the program continues here in case this jump is happening. So instead of calling methods left and right, what you know maybe from JavaScript and all other high-level languages, it's just a flat file and you're just jumping around left and right. So what we can see here is our AL value. This is the value that was being set in that function that we have investigated before. And this is now copied into CL. Then we decrease CL by one. And then we move the hex representation of 10 into AX. So what is 10 in hexadecimal? So hexadecimal 10 is a binary representation of 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So 1 and 4 zeros. This is now in our AX register. And then we shift left by CL. So whatever is in CL that came back is shifting the binary number, like the one and four zeros to the left. So if you have one in CL, then you will have one and five zeros. If it's two, you have one and six zeros and so on. And yeah, then I guess we are just adding a K at the end. So this makes a lot of sense. So this is how version 1.2 works, and I think it should be very similar in the other BIOS. So let's look in the other BIOS. So now we are in version 2.01, and we want to look at this function here. This is the function that we believe has been changed, because it looks very different from the flow of version 1.2. And as you can see, even if you go down here, this is exactly the same what we have seen in version 1.2 right now. We take whatever is in AL and put it in CL, then we decrease CL by one, then we add 10 into AX, 10 in hexadecimal into AX, and then we shift left whatever is in AX by the number what is in CL, and then we add K at the end and most likely display it somewhere on the screen. So let's have a look at this method that is right here at DF00. So DF00. Zero, zero. Ah, okay, so this method doesn't look anything like the method we have seen before. Remember that method that wrote into 70 and then read from 71? This one doesn't look at all like this. But we have another call here. Let's see what this one is doing at 9e23. 9e23. Oh, look at this. We have seen that before. Remember, we put 3a into al and then we added another bit somewhere and then we wrote something to 70 hexadecimal, then we wrote something to e1 hexadecimal, and then we read something, most likely our cache size, and then we write again and we do some modification to AL and then we return. So DF00 calls the method that actually should be called. But instead of returning the value that is in AL, it does something to whatever is stored in AL. So what we can see here is that it will compare the hexadecimal value of 5 to AL. So it basically checks, is AL5 in hexadecimal or in decimal? It's the same. And if it is true, then it will jump to memory location DF09, which coincidentally is the return statement of this function, just a few lines below. But if it's not equal to 5, then the code will go ahead and execute the move instruction. Copy 5 into AL and return. So after the call is done, this method that seems to be, by the way, copied into an empty block, as you can see, there is nothing going on here. 
zero 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 i think these are all no ops or just empty blocks this is nothing somebody decided to put a new function call in here which calls first the function that should be called and fills al but then it compares if al is equal to five and if it is not equal to five override whatever is in al with five and return so we will always get 5 as a value in AL. And 5 as a value in AL is then being used in our other method. So we always get 5. Let's go back into our main function that was, I think, somewhere here. So here's our function. So we call this function and whatever is in AL is not what in version 1.2 was returned it is always 5 so if we then move on to our calculation that should give us the value displayed on the screen so in here we use whatever is in al and put it into cl then we decrease it by 1 so instead of 5 we get 4 and then comes the interesting part because that is now the value that is being calculated that should be shown on the screen Let's start one by one. So we know now we have 5 in AL, and then it goes into CL. Then we decrease CL by 1. This is the decrease instruction here. And then there is 4 in CL. But then we move 10 in hexadecimal into our AX register. So um, let's go hexadecimal 10. Um, and this is, again, our 1 with 4 zeros. And in decimal, this is 16. Now the next part is shift everything in AX to the left by whatever number is in CL. And in CL is 4. So basically, I have now 10000 this is the binary representation of 10 hexadecimal that was copied into ax but now i have to shift it to left by four places so i basically add four more zeros so let's add four more zeros one two three four and you can see in my calculator here that the decimal value is 256 which is displayed on my summary screen so this BIOS forever will display 256 no matter what we install. 0, 64, 128, 1 megabyte, that's not possible. But still, whatever you install in that motherboard, it will always show 256. And then it adds the K at the end. And this is what is happening here. So what we could do is we could go to this method um what was it the uh, df00 and we could just remove what is here we could just get rid of these three lines this from df03 to df07 then it would just call that one method and return that would be a possibility what we also could do is that we redirect the call instead of the main function calling on df00 we could just call on 9e23 what you see here in the call that's basically the the original call and we completely ignore that method and this is also what you see in that picture that i've got from the person on vogons but now let's play around with this bios a little bit how did i get it to display 32 megabytes of level 2 cache so the 5 determines how many left shifts we have. And we have seen that every 0 that I'm adding, we are doubling the cache size. So I can modify this value and I can go ahead and I add more zeros. So right now we have 5 and we ended up with 256. If I add another one, so if we would increase this to 6, we would get 512. Okay, this wasn't very clear when I edited the video. Now I said here we already shifted left by five positions, but don't forget that this is the result of this method call, which goes back to the main function. And in there we had the hexadecimal number 10, which is put into the register AX. And then it is left shifted by whatever number we return from this method minus one. 
So 5 minus 1 is 4. That's why we left shift the binary value by 4 places, basically adding another 4 zeros. And the first 4 zeros come from the hexadecimal number 10 converted to binary, which is 10000. And for 7, we would get 1024, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if this method would return 12, then we would get 32 megabytes of level 2 cache as seen in the intro. So let's do this very quickly because I want to show you something else. But before that, I need to make a backup of my files. So let's exit this out very quickly. And you can see I have, uh, here are the BIOSes. So I will take the V429S201 bin and I will just copy it to BIOS201.bin. Let's call it like this. So now we have a copy of the original BIOS and uh, let's open modbin very quickly. And let me open this BIOS we have just created. And as you can see, we have the BIOS loaded up. This is our uh, boot string uh, on the very top, the yellow one. And you have a line that is displayed during the boot process, the deep green PC BIOS version 2.01R. Um, you can go through and change the hard drive table and do all kinds of other things, but this is not part of this video today. So we can load the BIOS, that's perfect. But now let's go back to our hex editor and we open 201. Let's go to our, I think 2500 is somewhere in the, in the cache area. Yes, here we are. So if we go ahead and look at our, this is our method, our offending method, the DF00, let's go there, DF00. Now, if we go ahead and want to modify this, we can. We go into a hex editor, you see this 3C05. This is basically what we see here. Now we need to modify this to 12. And don't forget, this is hexadecimal, so 12 in hexadecimal is C. So we have to change this to, I have to go in edit mode, 0, C. Okay, and then we can press F9 update. But now if we check our code here, yes, we are modifying the code to check against 0, C now instead of 0, 5. But we still override it with 0, 5, so we need to change this one as well. So this 05 also needs to be 0C and update. And now we have updated our method and the BIOS to show us 32 megabytes of level two cache. So let's quit out of this now and let's open modbin and let's open the file again. I want to have this one. Oh, it failed because the BIOS is protected by a checksum. And this is something I also had to figure out because now we made a modification inside the BIOS file, we need to adjust the checksum. Unfortunately, Modbin is not capable of doing this automatically or just continue and tell you, hey, the checksum is wrong, what do you want to do? No, it uh, stops, you can't do anything. So let's open Hue again and open version 2.01 at the very end of the file. So now we are at the end of the BIOS file. You see this 12 written here. This is our checksum. And apparently the checksum is just adding up not all the bytes, but at certain sections, the bytes, they're just added up. And always when we reach 256, it flips back to 00. CD, for instance, has the value of 205. 0, 02 has a value of 2 and it's just adding them up and the problem is I don't know which locations they are exactly. So I created an Excel sheet to do this and this Excel file can calculate your new checksum. So all you need to do is you need to enter your current checksum which is 12 in our case 
And then you need to record all the changes that you have made to the file. We have done two changes. We changed two bytes. We have changed them from 5 to C in both cases. So we had 5 and C. And we had another 5 and C. So this is what we changed in that function. And you can see that the new checksum is 4. So what we need to do now is we need to modify this checksum at the end of the file. I'm at the very bottom of this file to 0, 04, but not in this file because this is the original file. We didn't make the change in here. So I have to quickly go and change to the other file, this one here. This one was the one that we changed at, uh, let's quickly go DF00. Uh, as you can see, here we have the 0c, this was 05 before, and here's also 0c, uh, that was 05 before. Here you can see the assembly code one more time. So now we need to go to the end of our file, and we have to change this 12 into 04. And this is it, now we can save. And now we can try to open this file with modbin, and hopefully it will not complain. Let's see. And BIOS 201. Ta-da! And this is how I changed the BIOS to show us 32 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Now, of course, this is not very helpful. We want to have the BIOS back in the original state. And we have already seen how the logic in there works. But what I want to do now is I want to open this one file again with our hex editor. Uh, this BIOS underscore 201, the one that we have changed. So we'll modify this file now. We use this as a base. So all changes need to be recorded in our Excel sheet. Uh, let's go to our method that was at 2500 somewhere. Um, where was that call to our offending method? 24, I think it's here somewhere. Yes, here it is. So DF00, this was the one that caused all that trouble, DF00. We don't want to call this method at all. We want to call the method that is at 9E23. So let's go back to 2500. And instead of having this method call, we want to go to 9E23. So now let's go and modify this. I haven't spent time trying to figure out how to calculate this, but what we need to end up with is we need to call 9E23. This is purely from information I got from my viewers. But what we need to do is we need to record our changes. So I can tell you already that we are going to change 0, 0. So basically 0. And we are changing BA. And 0, 0 will be changed to 23. And BA will be changed to 79. This is going to be the change. And most likely this will be all you need to do, but I want to do one more thing. So our new checksum for this file should be 22, but we are not done yet. So let's just go ahead and actually apply the changes to our file here. So this one, 00, zero changes to 23 and BA changes to 79. And as you can see, now we have a call to 9E23. This is also the one, I save this now. This is the one, 9E23. Let's go one more time. That was at DF00. Remember, 9E23, 9E23. That was called anyway in that file, but then the result was overwritten. So what we can do now is we could completely erase whatever is here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes. These 10 bytes all have to be changed. Now I'll open the Excel sheet again. So we have to change E8 and this goes to 0. Let me first add all of the old values. So we have 20, we have BF, we have 3C. We have 0C, 74, 02, B0, 0C, and C3. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bytes that additionally are changed and they're all going to zero, 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 zero. Oh, let me see if I can just drag this. Yes. And our new checksum should be 26 with all these changes. So we should be able to go ahead and empty all of these out now. So let's try this. I'm editing 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now we changed 10 bytes, as you can see here, five rows, each with two bytes on it. We completely erased that function. So let's uh, memorize that our new checksum should be 26. Let's go to hex editor and go here and change this last byte to 26. Update and we're done. Let's see if we can open this file in modbin. So five, let's open modbin and open our BIOS file. And it's open. So yes, the BIOS file opened without the checksum error, but I'm not happy with the deep green PC BIOS version 2.01, but we can add something like cache fix or something. Let's just update the file. I will override the same file right now. So let's open the file one last time with our hex editor. And let's have a look at the final byte because this is our checksum. And as you can see, this has changed now because we have changed the message that is displayed during the boot process. But the important part was that we could modify the BIOS, maybe follow the logic a little bit. Sorry if I'm not explaining it very well. I'm very new at this, but we can install this BIOS now on my board. And of course, I will make this BIOS available to the RetroWeb that you can have both versions if you want to, to look at. But now I want to go ahead and flash this BIOS onto my motherboard and see if it actually works. Okay, I flashed the BIOS chip and now let's see what we get. Does it boot? Do we get the new boot message? And then we will run Speedsus. Hey, we have the cache fix. So this one worked. You can see here next to the version number 2.01, we have our cache fix, the system booted. Let's continue. Okay, and we have 128 kilobytes of level two cache, finally. So I really only have 128 kilobytes of level two cache installed on this board. This would have never been possible with the original BIOS that came on this board. It would always go to 256 as we have seen. We have removed the entire method that was responsible for showing 256 kilobytes of level two cache, no matter what was installed on this board. And we have redirected the call to the method that calculates the cache size. So all in all, I think I'm pretty happy with this. This BIOS is now back to how it was intended to be. So let's see what Speedsys is going to report. It should be hopefully dropping at 128 kilobytes. But this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope I conveyed the message to a point that you could follow me and see what was changed in this BIOS to always show 256 kilobytes of level two cache. And there we go. We have our drop at 128 kilobytes. So yeah, the cache is definitely working. We have a value displayed on this board that is correct based on what chips are installed and what we see here in Speedsys. And yeah, I will upload this version to the RetroWeb now to have it available to uh, whoever has this board. I'm not sure if you do, let me know. I'm really curious about it. And thank you so much to everybody who reached out. Without your input, I would not have been able to figure out what was done to this BIOS and revert it. And this is all I have for you today. If you like my videos, then please subscribe to my channel, leave a like. And if you want to support me, hop over to Patreon. You can subscribe for free. Sometimes I will post some updates for everybody who is there. And of course, I'm very thankful for everyone who is contributing that I can spend time, resources and effort on making videos like this. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching, for your time. And I hope, well, you learned something.
And if you're interested in the Excel sheet, go over to my website. I'll try to condense the information in this video in a small post. I will have the version of Modbin that I have used today, as well as a link to the hex editor that I used in MS-DOS, and of course the Excel sheet. And now I'm off until the next video. Take care and bye-bye.